Welcome to part 15 of the My DCEU series. In this part, we'll be doing movies from Earth 1 to 3. This part will start with an Earth 1 Hal Jordan Green Lantern sequel movie. The movie starts with the planet that is known as Ryut, and Ryut is in the sector of the universe with number 666. We see a native of the planet that is named Atrocitus, living with his wife and child in their home. That's when there is a knock at the door. Atrocitus answers the door. You see an army of robots standing in the doorway. The robots say that they are checking on the habitats of the planet on behalf of the Green Lantern Corps. However, the robots' eyes change from blue to red. Once this happens, it is clear to Atrocitus that the robots are not there to protect them anymore. Then the robots kill everyone on the planet except for Atrocitus. We then fast forward to present day on the planet Oa. The Guardians of the Universe are having a meeting when they hear screams from some of the Green Lanterns. They go to check it out, and they find most of the Green Lantern rings falling from the sky. Then they see that some of the Lanterns are retreating from the planet, and then the Guardians see that some of the Lanterns are fighting each other. They then see Atrocitus coming to them from the sky. Atrocitus walks over to the Guardians, and he tells them that they must pay for letting his planet die. The Guardians don't know what Atrocitus is talking about. Atrocitus sees the confusion on all the Guardians' faces, and he realizes that they don't know what he is talking about. He asks them about their secret robot army. When the Guardians don't answer, Atrocitus goes in a mad rage and attacks all the Guardians. All, all the Guardians then go off-world to get away from Atrocitus. Atrocitus goes over to the control room and looks at all the information that the Guardians have. He then finds out that the Guardians can not only see the past and the present, but they can also see the future. On Earth, Hal is getting ready to reveal a new plane for the Air Force. Before he does, there are screams outside. He grabs his ring and he heads in that direction. He sees one of the Guardians standing in the middle of the street. Hal puts his ring on and he asks the Guardian what he is doing. The Guardian almost says Hal's name, but Hal makes a green piece of tape to cover up the mouth of the Guardian. Hal says that the Guardian should not say his real name and the Guardian needs to call him just Green Lantern. The Guardian agrees, and they tell Hal about their attack from Atrocitus. Before the Guardian can finish, a red beam strikes him and Hal. Hal starts to get up, and he sees Atrocitus about to kill the Guardian. Hal puts the Guardian in a bubble and sends him off to space. Atrocitus looks at Hal, and he asks Hal why he saved him. Hal says that he tries to save everyone in the universe. Atrocitus asks why Hal even saves the people who do the wrong thing. Hal says that everyone is redeemable if they are given a second chance. Atrocitus tells Hal that he would not be saying that if he knew what the Guardians have done in the past and what they will do in the future. Hal says that nobody knows what the future holds. Atrocitus says that he does because he was able to see the future from the power source on Oa. Atrocitus says that the power source is also where he learned to make this. Atrocitus then pulls out a ring that looks like Hal's. However, his ring is red, not green. Hal says that a new ring is not possible. Atrocitus says that it is possible when you realize that the two rings are exactly alike, except for the fact that Hal's ring is based on willpower and Atrocitus is based on anger. The only thing that Atrocitus needs now is an army, and the people who live on the planet Earth are always filled with anger, so they will be perfect for his army. Hal tries to stop him, but before he can, Atrocitus shoots him with another red beam made out of anger. Sending Hal into space. Hal is hurt as he is floating through space. As he is floating, he starts to feel anger from the red ring because of his failure to stop Atrocitus and at the Guardians for the secrets that they are keeping from the Green Lantern Corps. This anger makes Hal want to go and fight Atrocitus again, even though he's still hurt. Before he goes back to Earth, his anger gets replaced by hope as he is sucked into a beam into a ship. On the ship, Hal sees that he is surrounded by some of his fellow Green Lanterns. They tell Hal that the Guardians managed to survive the attack from Atrocitus, and they found refuge on the planet Odom. When they get to Odom, one of the Guardians greets them. The Guardian says that they are still looking to bring some of the Green Lanterns to the planet. The Guardian then introduces the Green Lanterns to the beings that live on that planet. The leader of the planet says their name is St. Walker, and he and the rest of the Blue Lantern Corps are pleased that the Guardians and the Green Lanterns or living on the planet. Hal gets a confused look on his face and asks who the Blue Lantern Corps are. 
Walker says that they are very similar to the Green Lantern Court in the way that they desire for the universe to be safe. However, the Green Lanterns use their willpowers to continue to fight to achieve their goals, while the Blue Lanterns use their hope for a peaceful universe for the future. Hal says that a peaceful universe is a nice dream but will never happen because the people that want peace will replace the people who are causing the damage to the universe. Walker says that there will be peace if everyone has hope to keep it that way. After Walker says this, one of the lanterns get a message from Sinestro. Sinestro says that he was transporting a prisoner unit to the planet and he was attacked by the red lanterns. Some of the green and blue lanterns go to help Sinestro, but when they get to the prisoner transport, they don't see any of the prisoners. They only see Sinestro floating around space. Hal asks Sinestro what happened. Sinestro says that Atrocitus attacked him and he bribed the prisoners on the transport to join his army. Hal and the rest of the Green Lanterns say that they need to go after Atrocitus, but St. Walker and the rest of the Blue Lanterns think that they should talk with Atrocitus without violence. Sinestro is trying to convince both sides to stay out of Atrocitus' business and to go back to Odom. Hal thinks that it is odd for Sinestro to say that since he was the one that was attacked. Sinestro says that he believes that it would be smart to get more allies for the fight. Hal says that if they do go back to Odom, then they might lose track on where Atrocitus and the prisoners went. Sinestro says that he has friends all across the universe and they will tell him where they are hiding. This convinces everyone besides Hal that they should go to Odom. Hal is still hesitant on Sinestro's actions. When they get to Odom, they see the planet is in flames. They then see that it was some of the prisoners that attacked the planet, and they are wearing the same red ring that Atrocitus was wearing. The prisoners say that Atrocitus formed the Red Lantern Court out of the anger that was given to him by the actions of the Guardians, and the anger he gets, the more power the Red Lanterns gain. Al asks him what the Guardians did to Atrocitus that made him so angry. They say that the Guardians killed Atrocitus' entire civilization, including his family, that were killed in front of him. Al says that there are other punishments for the Guardians than death and destruction. This makes Walker get a smile on his face and says that is true because when a killer gets killed, another one will take his place. A member of the Red Lantern Corps says that it won't be a problem because there will only be one true ruler who will be the judge, jury, and executioner, and that will be the Lord Atrocitus. Walker looks over at Hal and says that they tried to talk to bring a peaceful solution. But now they realize that there is no other way but to fight the Rain Lantern Court. This starts a fight between the two groups. The Blue and Green Lanterns defeat the Red Lanterns. Hal asks one of them where Atrocitus is. They tell him that while Hal has been away, Atrocitus is building an army and base on Earth. This angers Hal, but Walker walks up behind him and says that anger is not the best emotion to have at this time. He says that Hal needs to have the will to continue to fight in this dark time. Then Hal looks at Walker and says that he will need more than willpower to overcome the fight. You will also need to feel the hope that everything will work out by the end of it. They then decide to go to Earth. However, Sinestro speaks up to say that he doesn't believe that Atrocitus is on Earth because that is not what his allies is telling him. Hal gets in his face and asks Sinestro why he doesn't want to go to Earth and fight Atrocitus. Before Sinestro can answer, a voice says that Sinestro knows that I know his secret. Everyone looks at the sky and see Atrocitus coming down to the planet. Sinestro uses his ring to put tape over Atrocitus' mouth to keep him quiet. However, Atrocitus keeps nicking it off. Atrocitus managed to tell Hal that he was right about Sinestro. Sinestro looks at Hal and says that he shouldn't believe Atrocitus, but Atrocitus was the one that enslaved Earth, and Sinestro was one of the people who taught Hal to be a lantern to begin with. Hal looks at Sinestro and says that he will not fight him right now because Hal needs Sinestro's help to fight Atrocitus. However, that doesn't mean that this conversation is over. This starts the final fight of the movie, and Atrocitus is destroying everyone who tries to fight him. Hal realizes in this fight that the Green Lanterns are working good together, and the Blue Lanterns are working good together, but the two groups of Lanterns are not trying to work together, and that is why they are losing. Hal goes to Walker, and they use their two rings to be 100 times better than they were before. This means that they were able to double their strength. This allows them to defeat Atrocitus. Before Atrocitus is taken to a space prison, he asks how to make a better system of power in the universe. Atrocitus then shows how everything that he saw on Oa in the Green Lantern power source. 
one of these things is that Sinestro killed John Stewart and Evan Sir. This makes Hal go ballistic as Sinestro gets a sinister smile on his face as he starts to change his green color to a yellow color. Sinestro says that he admits that this wasn't the right time for Hal and the rest to find out. But I will guess this will have to do. Hal attacks Sinestro to get revenge on John and Evan, but Sinestro just keeps smiling and says that Hal is doing good by using fear and anger to diminish the willpower in his green ring. Before it can get too bad, Walker stops Hal by reminding him that the number of killers will remain the same if they are killed. Hal gets off of Sinestro, and the Green Lanterns take him and Atrocities away to jail until the Green Lanterns know what to do with the two. The movie ends with the Green and Blue Lanterns working together to rebuild Earth, Odom, and Oa to be like it was before Atrocities attacked. Also, Hal makes it where the Guardians have to have permission from the Green Lanterns to make any decision in the future. The first post credit scene is one of the rings that fell off of one of the dead Green Lanterns finding a little girl on Earth named Orisa to be a new Lantern. The second post-credit scene is the Guardians, who are no longer in control of the Green Lantern Corps, since their last bit of control with a device called the Star Heart through a portal. The next movie in this part will take place on Earth 2, and it will have to do with the Green Lantern named Alan Scott. The movie starts with Alan in his everyday job as an engineer. One day while he is working on a railroad that is supposed to be empty of all trains. One day while he is working on a railroad that is supposed to be empty of all trains, a train starts to come out of nowhere. The train is about to hit Alan. However, before it can do so, a portal opens above him and out comes the Sarhart technology that the Guardians had. The Sarhart gets between the train and Alan that stops the train in his tracks. Alan can't believe what he has seen, and he goes to the train to investigate. He sees that the train has been crushed on the front side. He then looks and sees the Sarhart sitting by the front wheel of the train. The Sarhart turns in the shape of a lantern. And as soon as Scott touches the Starheart, it gives him all the information to be a Green Lantern. That is, at least, what the Guardians believe what a Green Lantern should be. Alan is confused about the power that he is feeling, and he starts to fight it. However, the power becomes too strong for him and takes control of him. The Starheart gets control of Alan's body with Alan's consciousness still knowing what is going on with his body. The Starheart makes Scott's body use the power that the Guardians gave him to fight all petty criminals. After fighting crime all night long, Alan wakes up barely remembering what has happened the night before. At first he thinks that it was all a dream, but he sees sitting on the dining room table the Star Heart Lantern. Scott thinks of anything to destroy the Star Heart, but nothing works. That is when the Star Heart grabs a hold of Scott and it gets inside of his mind to convince him that it is a good thing that he has the Star Heart. Scott decides that it is a good thing that Starheart has shown to him because he can help the city that he lives in and maybe even the world. However, he wants to be in control of his body at all times, so he is able to convince the Starheart that he does not need all the power that the Starheart has at one time. This is why he then turns a part of the lantern shape that the Starheart is in into a small ring that Alan can wear that holds enough power to stop the bad things that are happening in the world but also enough power for Alan to stay in control. Then, when Alan needs more of Starheart's power, Alan can use the rest of the lantern to recharge the power in the ring. With Alan and the Starheart now on the same page, they are able to work together. During one of the times that they are fighting criminals, they overhear one of them talking about how their boss named Decker has been able to send Luke Rice some more power in the last couple of months by doing some illegal things. After Alan hears this, he interrogates them to try and find out where Decker is. Once he figures that out, he hunts Decker down. In Decker's office building, Scott puts up a green wall in the doorway and the windows to make sure that Decker doesn't escape. Scott tells Decker that he knows all about the illegal activities that he and his business have been up to in the last couple months, and he is going to take Decker down. Decker says that he doesn't know what Scott is talking about as he tries to slide a piece of paper out of Scott's eyesight. Scott uses his ring to get the paper away from Decker. The paper tells Scott that it was Decker's company that was the ones that made the train crash into Alan. Scott asks Decker why he had the train crash into him. Decker says that there was a certain material in the ground under the railroad tracks, and he needed all the trains destroyed to be off of the railroad tracks and anyone that could see the trains being destroyed, which included Alan. 
Alan decides that he has heard enough of what Decker was saying and was about to take Decker away to prison. Before he can, though, Decker grabs the syringe off his desk and ejects what is inside of the syringe into his neck. Decker starts to have his body to get bigger in size to make him look like a mutated monster. The new Decker is able to easily overpower Alan is able to throw Alan through his own green fields that he created to keep Decker out. Decker throws Alan through a wall that makes him land in a lab area. Decker walks into the lab and he sees several different test tubes. Decker picks one up and he instructs one of his security guards to pick up Alan to hold him still. Decker says that the liquid in the tube will turn Alan into a walking zombie that would take all of Decker's commands. Decker then tries to throw the liquid onto Alan, but Alan uses the ring to power out of the arms of the security guards which causes the liquid to land on one of the guards. Decker looks up and he sees Alan having the ring and the star heart. Alan comes back down onto Decker, making the building come crashing down around them. Alan shoots out of the destruction with Decker in his hand. Alan starts to take him further into the Earth's atmosphere. The further they get into the atmosphere, the more that Decker turns back into his normal self. It gets to the point that Decker is pleading Alan for his life. Alan starts to realize the destruction that he has caused just because of one person. We hear the star heart telling Alan to kill Decker, but Alan is mentally strong enough to fight off the demands of the star heart. Alan tells the star heart that they have had an agreement that their mission is to help the world. If the star heart doesn't agree with this type of mission, and if the star heart will try to stop Alan from achieving this mission, then Alan will do anything in his power to make sure that the star heart is destroyed. This makes the star heart reluctantly agree that they shouldn't kill anybody. However, during the time that Alan and the star heart is having this conversation, Alan forgives that he is holding Decker's body in his arms, and he accidentally drops him. Alan eventually catches Decker, but it is too late, and Decker dies from a heart attack because of the fear of falling. Alan takes Decker to the nearest hospital. The movie ends with Alan alerting the correct authorities about the materials that Decker was after that was underneath the railroad tracks. He then quits his job as a railroad engineer to get a job as an engineer at a broadcasting company to learn about the upcoming crimes in the city. The post credit scene is a person laying in the wreckage of the building, and he has a lot of ice from the test foods laying around him. They start to get to their feet, and they look up to see Alan flying away with Decker. He looks around and sees a giant hand reach up from the destruction to yell out, Solomon Grundy. The person looks at Grundy with a smile as his entire body turns into an ice blue color. The final movie in this part is a movie that takes place on Earth 3. Well, I say it happens on Earth, but it actually takes place in the outer space of Earth 3. And it is a movie about Sinestro. The movie begins with the young Sinestro on his planet, Korrigar, being picked on by his fellow Korrigarians. For his small weight and height. He tries to fight back but he isn't strong enough to fight them off. However he makes sure that he shows them that he is not as weak as they think that he is. By taking their attacks and not crying. The constant bullying makes Sinestro severely depressed. And it makes Sinestro want to end it all and kill himself. However he hears a scream coming from the distance. He looks and sees that there is a little child that looks a lot like Sinestro being picked on by the same bullies that were picking on him. This makes Sinestro angry because he knows that he can handle being picked on from the bullies. But there is no reason that the bullies should pick on someone that obviously can't handle it. This makes Sinestro stand up for the kid and he manages to take out all the bullies. Sinestro talks to the little kid and they say to him that if it wasn't for Sinestro, then there is no telling... What would have happened to him? This makes Sinestro realize that he still has some worth even with everything that he has gone through with the bullying. This realization makes Sinestro want to help more people like him and the kid. This makes Sinestro think that the best way to help these people is to join the mil- planet military. He is faced with many hardships with joining the military because of his body size. However, he is able to have enough willpower to be successful in the military. The willpower that he has gets him far into the military. However, he realizes that the willpower that he has won't be enough to be seen with the amount of respect that he wants from his fellow Gorgarians in the military. He sees that the generals in the military have been using fear to get the respect that 
he wants. So during the first battle that the military faces, Tenesho gains all the information that he wants to have to have blackmail on all of the soldiers. That makes it easy for him to force the generals and the rest of the people in the military to help Tenesho be control of Korrigar. After his new followers help him take over the rulership of Korrigar, he brainwashes all the other people that live on Korrigar to treat him like a god so that they never question the actions that he makes while running the planet. The movie ends with Sinesho feeling that he needs to keep the willpower up if he wants to continue to rule the planet. However, he also realizes that the willpower is not enough. He needs to control the fear that the people of Korrigar already have for him to make sure that they don't rise up against him in the first place. He then decides that he needs to install fear all across the universe. His next stop will be Earth. The post credit scene for this movie is the Guardians of the Universe of the Earth 3 universe freaking out about the rise that Sinestro is having. So they decide to send out some of the robots that they own to try and protect Earth. Thank you for watching part 15 of this series. Please like, comment, and subscribe.